Good morning and welcome to Seven's Early News. We start with breaking news out of Japan where a series of powerful earthquakes sparked panic when the nation's west coast was put under a major tsunami warning. The largest tremor had a magnitude of 7.6, causing buildings to collapse and roads to crack as residents fled. A tranquil New Year's Day shattered along Japan's west coast. Millions gripped with fear as a series of 20 earthquakes struck. The biggest, magnitude 7.6 tremor, felt in the capital Tokyo, more than 300 kilometres away. The force of the earthquake collapsed homes and buildings. In shopping centres, there was immediate panic, while some raced for the exit, others cowered in fear. In a local newsroom, a quick-thinking cameraman began filming as the quake hit. The tremor leaving roads buckled, fires destroying homes and other buildings. Even more frightening, the quake triggered a major tsunami warning. Residents in coastal areas told to evacuate immediately. It was Japan's first major tsunami warning since the 2011 Fukushima disaster, which claimed more than 18,000 lives. The first tsunami waves, some more than a metre high, did reach the coast, but authorities had warned of waves as high as five metres. Japanese authorities say no irregularities have been reported from nuclear power plants in the region. The major jolt was also felt by tourists in Japan's mountainous Nagano region for the start of the snow sports season, including these Aussies. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you all right? From Japan's Prime Minister, an ominous warning. And I call on the people in the disaster hit areas to remain on alert for more earthquakes to come. The country on edge over what could happen next. Gina Trahan, Seven News. The high-profile quad grouping of Australia, the United States, Japan and India is facing renewed questions about its ability to defend against China. It comes after US President Joe Biden cancelled plans for a leaders' meeting for the second year running. Preparations were underway for Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to host Anthony Albanese and the other quad leaders on January 27. But those plans were ditched after Biden declined an invitation to travel to India. It's feared the Australian Border Force will struggle to stop single-use vapes coming into the country under the national crackdown on recreational vaping. As of yesterday, the federal government has banned the importation of disposable single-use vapes, irrespective of whether they even contain nicotine. The move marks the first stage of its reform aimed at stopping the growth of vaping among young people. A man has been hospitalised after a blaze in a Meadowbank unit block in Sydney's northwest. The resident, who was severely burned in the top floor fire, was taken to Royal North Shore Hospital in a critical condition. New South Wales Police have now established a crime scene at the complex and have urged anyone with information to come forward. A chemical poured onto a fire at a New Year's Eve house party is believed to have caused a major explosion. It's understood the party in Melbourne's Mill Park had close to 100 people in attendance. The blast, captured by CCTV, injured 15 people and left eight with serious burns. Investigations into the incident are continuing. Melbourne researchers have made a major medical breakthrough after discovering a potential world-first cure for chronic diabetes. The groundbreaking therapy has been hailed as serendipitous after the team un uncovered a way to rewire those who suffer from a lack of insulin. Scientists from the Baker Heart and Diabetes Institute say the therapy could eventually eliminate the need for injections altogether. It's been revealed that a 150,000 square metre parkland in Sydney's Hunter Hill is the subject of an Aboriginal Land Council claim. The move has sparked concerns that the Baronia Park site would be turned from a green space into a housing development, a claim rejected by the Land Council chief, Nathan Moran. It comes after a record number of land claims were granted in New South Wales with more than 540 approved in the last financial year.
A quick check of sport now. And the two most powerful men in Australia, Pat Cummins and Anthony Albanese, welcomed the Pakistan team to Kirribilli House ahead of tomorrow's Sydney test, which will be David Warner's last. It's the start of Davies week, Warner week this week. And uh, what a fitting way to finish. We're uh, certainly going to miss you on and off the field. And I'm sure many of the members of parliament are going to miss chatting to you each year here at Kirribilli House and hearing your thoughts on monetary policy and the taxation policy in Australia. <laughs> and you can watch all the action from the third test against Pakistan here on Channel 7. The Sydney Thunder have gone to the bottom of the BBL table after suffering, suffering a seven-wicket defeat to the Hobart Hurricanes. English recruit Tom Kohler-Cadmore was run out before facing a ball for the Thunder, whilst Hobart's Englishman Chris Jordan starred, taking two for 20. Chasing 150, Ben McDermott scored an undefeated half-century to steer Hobart to their second win of the season. Brisbane superfan Cameron Smith unfortunately did not get to see a ball bowled in last night's clash between the Heat and the Sixers due to the rain. Checking Tuesday's weather now and showers in Brisbane and a possible storm in 26, partly cloudy in Sydney in 29, showers and a possible storm in Canberra in 27, showers developing in Melbourne and 26, cloudy in Hobart in 22, mostly sunny in Adelaide and 30, partly cloudy in Perth and 30, and showers and a possible storm in Darwin and 34. Next on Seven's early news, the Gold Coast remains under a flood warning as over 350 millimetres of rain falls across the region. And Australia's own Princess Mary is set to become Queen of Denmark following the shock abdication of Queen Margareta. Floodwaters continue to rise in the Gold Coast as a weather emergency unfolds. Queensland police this week confirmed conditions remain dangerous, threatening homes and impacting road services. Roads have turned to rivers in Tambourine Mountain, while overnight rainfall totals have seen an excess of 380 millimetres. Flood warnings remain for the Narang and Coomera rivers, with a moderate flood warning for the Logan and Albert rivers. Tributes have flowed for two-time Olympian and former world champion cyclist Melissa Hoskins, who allegedly was killed by a ute driven by her Olympic cyclist husband, Rowan Dennis. Anna Mears, one of Australia's greatest track cyclists, posting on social media, I have a very heavy heart. This is a very difficult and tragic time. Hoskins' husband has been charged with causing death by dangerous driving, driving without due care and endangering life. The nation's religious leaders have expressed fears the federal government's new religious discrimination bill will fail. They've cited a need for freedom of speech but also protection against vilification in the wake of the growing Israel-Hamas tensions. After receiving framework for a new religious freedoms regime, Attorney General Mark Dreyfus has told faith leaders a draft bill will be ready before July. But Jewish and Muslim leaders want to see how the bill will protect the constituents from hate speech before giving it their backing. The fighting in Israel and Gaza has continued into the new year with no end in sight. Hamas fired rockets at Tel Aviv overnight as Israel's ground invasion in Gaza rolls on. After three months of conflict, Israel's army says it was preparing for prolonged fighting. Authorities say the war could last throughout the entire year. Vladimir Putin has pledged to intensify attacks against Ukraine. The Russian president saying the military will continue to target Ukraine's military installations. It follows days of aerial bombardment by both sides in the long-running war. In the latest attack, Ukraine shelled the city of Donetsk on New Year's Day. Australia's own Crown Princess Mary of Denmark will soon be the country's queen after her mother-in-law's surprise decision to stand down. The announcement made in a televised national address. Mary's husband, Frederick, will take the throne in less than a fortnight. 20 years after a fairy tale wedding, Former Miss Mary Donaldson will become Queen of Denmark after her mother-in-law's New Year's Eve surprise. I have decided that now is the right time. On the 14th of January 2024, 52 years after I succeeded my beloved father, 
I will step down as Queen of Denmark. I will hand over the throne to my son, Crown Prince Frederick. He will become King Frederick X, Mary, his queen, sending a buzz through her hometown of Hobart. Oh, good on a good Tassie girl. Next, next roll up, next step up. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Oh, that's good, very good. I suppose she's been in waiting, so it's good. Fabulous. Well done her. Queen Margareta underwent back surgery in February last year. A widely beloved, chain-smoking, history-making monarch. Currently the longest reigning sovereign among Europe's royal households after the death of Queen Elizabeth. Now the first Danish monarch to abdicate. It will happen on January 14. Denmark's government will meet to formally name Frederick as king. The declaration made at Copenhagen's Christiansborg Palace There'll be no grand coronation, but plenty of congratulations already. The Tasmanian Premier says, with her demonstrated humility, grace and kindness, I'm sure Crown Princess Mary will be embraced as Queen alongside her husband, King Frederick. Princess Mary is a wonderful ambassador for Tasmania. Wow, Tasmanian Queen. Well done to her. Mary and family are regular visitors home, mostly for holidays, always relaxed and low-key. Here she is with her twins just before Christmas. But from now on, they'll be state visits with all the protection and protocol that goes with being a king and queen. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. Next on 7 Early News, a person has been arrested following an alleged home invasion in Sydney's west. The dramatic details. And mobile phone detection cameras are set to be rolled out in Adelaide. The grace period for drivers. We're following on the early news. A tsunami warning has been downgraded in Japan after the country was struck by dozens of massive earthquakes. Concerns for the quad grouping as US President Joe Biden pulls out of an upcoming meeting in India. Melbourne researchers make an incredible breakthrough for a diabetes cure with hopes it could go commercial. And Australia's own Princess Mary prepares to become Queen of Denmark. Police are investigating a car fire in Sydney's west after an abandoned vehicle was discovered burning in Yenora. The car was found near a ra railway crossing with firefighters taking around 30 minutes to put it out. The incident caused minor delays to the network with trains forced to slow down while passing the scene. A crime scene has been established and a person has been arrested in Sydney's west following an alleged home invasion. The residents told officers that a person had forced entry into the home, which led to a confrontation with the occupants. They fled the scene shortly before police arrived. It's claimed that the fuel was spilled at the home, which was removed by firefighters. Adelaide's first mobile phone detection cameras will be in place later this year, with the South Road Corridor set to be the main target of the rollout. A three-month grace period will be in place for motorists between June and September, during which no fines or demerit points will be issued. The current fine for using a mobile phone while driving in Australia is $540 plus a $99 victims of crime levy. Sydney locals are upset and angry after their famous blue groper called Gus was illegally speared in front of shocked beachgoers. Police have caught the fishermen, but witnesses say the punishment is a joke. Busted carrying his kill up the beach. This man's trophy catch is a protected local icon known as Gus. He's really part of this community. The Blue Groper has lived off Cronulla's Oak Park Beach for decades. The Peak family would dive with him almost daily. Daughter Tennille has the fish inked on her arm. Gropers are like a Labrador. They just come up to you, they'll eat out of your hand. There's no skill in a spear fisherman taking a groper. Carolyn and Bob watched from the shore on Saturday as this man dragged Gus from the water, in spite of signs all over the beach explaining that spear fishing is banned. Oh, I was so sad. I just wanted to cry straight away. It was devastating. Witnesses say the man showed no remorse. Started sort of um, hurling abuse at uh, the locals as he walked uh, off the beach and um, yeah, just didn't really show any care for what he'd done. Police were called and have fined the 26-year-old fisherman $500, a penalty locals say will do little to deter others. He's going to have a laugh at that. 
I mean, that's pathetic. He's come out, he's taken something that can't be replaced. The fine can go as high as $22,000 and up to six months in jail. The Department of Primary Industries is now investigating. Jody Lee, 7 News. David Warner has confirmed his retirement from One Day Internationals as well as Test Cricket. Tomorrow's Sydney Test will be his last. He'll keep playing other formats, but at 37, Warner is also stepping away from the 50-over game. Giving back time to his family, David Warner calling stumps on his Test career. To be here, 112 Tests, I think it is, um, coming out for the last time, it's... Still pinching myself. That announcement came as no surprise, but his next did. I'm definitely retiring from one day cricket as well. Warner says he'd pencilled in retiring ahead of last year's second Ashes test at Lords. Instead, alongside childhood mate and opening partner Usman Kawaja, Warner says he gets a fairy tale ending on his home ground. A boy from Housing Commission having a dream. You know, I've not always fitted the mould, but I've been authentic um, and honest. But a career that hit its lowest point following Sandpaper Gate and a 12 month ban, costing Warner leadership roles. Today he says there are no regrets. You have to move forward and I've done that with dignity. I've, I've come back. Concentrating now on T20 and cricket commentary. So hopefully he can go out on a high. It'd be great to see him get 100 here in front of his home crowd. David Warner says he hopes to finish his test career as part of an Australian whitewash over Pakistan. But here at the SCG this week, the most important colour is pink. The 16th annual Pink Test, raising money for breast cancer. Probably the, the biggest sporting charity uh, partnership anywhere in the world. With the most ambitious targets yet, funding 250 breast cancer nurses to support patients like Christy Wales, diagnosed at just 26. Found a lump and then a week later you get told it's breast cancer, which is just shocking and it really just kind of tears your wealth apart. The New Year test. All we need is for the rain to stay away. Chris Ma, 7 News. Taking a look at sport now, the two most powerful men in Australia, Pat Cummins and Anthony Albanese, welcome the Pakistan team to Kirribilli House ahead of tomorrow's Sydney test, which will be David Warner's last. It's the start of Davies week, Warner week this week. And uh, what a fitting way to finish. We're uh, certainly going to miss you on and off the field. And I'm sure many of the members of parliament are going to miss chatting to you each year here at Kirribilli House and hearing your thoughts on monetary policy and the taxation policy in Australia. <laughs> and you can watch all the action from the third test against Pakistan here on Channel 7. The Sydney Thunder have gone to the bottom of the BBL table after suffering, suffering a seven-wicket defeat to the Hobart Hurricanes. English recruit Tom Kohler-Cadmore was run out before facing a ball for the Thunder, while Hobart's Englishman Chris Jordan starred taking two for 20. Chasing 150, Ben McDermott scored an undefeated half-century to steer Hobart to their second win of the season. Brisbane superfan Cameron Smith unfortunately did not get to see a ball bowled, in last night's clash between the Heat and the Sixers due to the rain. Australia has advanced through to the quarterfinals of the United Cup thanks to a 2-1 victory over USA. Alex Dimonor dominated top 10 ranked player Taylor Fritz in straight sets to begin the tie. It's been a demolition from Dimonor. Such an impressive display. Isla Tomlanovic lost her women's single tie 7-6, 6-3 before mixed double stars Matthew Ebden and Storm Hunter thrashed the Americas in straight sets to seal the tie. Australia are likely to play Novak Djokovic's Serbia in tomorrow night's quarterfinal. The Western Sydney, Sydney Wanderers have won the Battle of Sydney's West. Within 12 minutes, the Wanderers had already scored two goals against MacArthur. But MacArthur's Jake Holman drew one back with this stunning what a strike. strike. What an amazing goal from Jake Holman. Western Sydney secured the 3-1 victory in the 84th minute. Next on Seven's Early News, a closer look at how the weather's shaping up in your part of the country. Matilda's star defender Ellie Carpenter has announced her engagement to partner Danielle Vanderdonk. The couple shared the news on social media, calling one another my person for life. The pair are believed to have been dating for over a year and met while playing for the same French Division 1 football team. 
Taking a look at the weather around the country now and showers in Brisbane and a possible storm in 26, partly cloudy in Sydney in 29, showers and a possible storm in Canberra in 27, showers developing in Melbourne in 26, cloudy in Hobart and 22, mostly sunny in Adelaide and 30, partly cloudy in Perth and 30 and showers and a possible storm in Darwin and 34. And that's Seven's Early News. I'm Tegan Dolling. Now it's time for Sunrise with Mon and Matt.